Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to CAFSI's webinar series, CAFSI Presents. Uh, my name is Lisa Stromquist, and I'm the coordinator for quality and patient safety here at the Canadian Association of Pediatric Health Centers. And uh, just about every Wednesday at this time, we showcase presentations of initiatives, projects, research, or you know, exciting things that are happening at one of our member or partner organizations. Uh, but before we get started today, uh, with our presentation. I just want to provide you with a few of the technical details. So all of our lines have come in muted so that there's no background noise to distract our presenters. And uh, you'll notice that there's a question box um, in the right hand side of your screen in the control panel. So as the presentation is unfolding, please feel free to write any questions that pop up um, as you know, just as things occur to you, and uh, those questions will be answered at the end of the presentation during a designated uh, Q and A session. And there are going to be two brief videos that are shown during this presentation. The video itself might seem a little bit slow, but the audio should be very clear, and uh, so they're they're important to listen to. And um, just like all of our other, uh, like all of our presentations, this one is going to be recorded and it's going to be posted to CAFSI's Knowledge Exchange Network and to our YouTube channel for viewing at a later time. Now topics for our Wednesday presentations are quite varied. Uh, so from FASD, childhood development and rehab, decision support, childhood pain, mental health, transitions. I encourage uh, everybody to visit uh, our Knowledge Exchange Network and view some of these past sessions. Uh, today's presentation is going to focus on patient safety education and creating uh, that uh, patient safety culture. And we're joined by colleagues from the Canadian Patient Safety Institute and Holland Blurview Kids Rehabilitation Hospital. So Joan Fernandez is a project manager at the uh, CPSI responsible for the patient safety education program, PSEP Canada. She's a registered nurse by profession and has a master's in public health. And Joan has worked in various healthcare settings over the years, including public health, ambulatory care, long term care, and as a college instructor, as well as working at Accreditation Canada and as a manager for quality improvement and accreditation at a tertiary mental health care and academic health sciences centre. We also have three guests from Holland Blurview Kids Rehabilitation Hospital Sonia Pagura, uh, Senior Director of Quality, Safety, and Performance, Judy Mayhew, Director of Quality and Risk Management, uh. and Nick Joachimides, uh, Manager of Patient Safety. So Sonia's career has spanned across clinical care, research, education, and advanced administrative leadership positions. And as the Senior Director of Quality, Safety, and Performance at one of Canada's largest pediatric rehab facilities, she provides strong enterprise-wide leadership in ensuring the horizontal and vertical integration of quality throughout the organization. And she completed her BA in physical health and health education and her baccalaureate of science in physical therapy and her master's of science with a focus on exercise physiology. More recently, Sonia is enrolled in her doctoral studies at the University of Toronto in the area of performance measurement and organizational utilization. And Judy uh, Mayhew, who is a director of quality and risk management, is an occupational therapist by profession and has a master's of health science from the University of Toronto. And Judy has worked in pediatric rehab at Holland Blurview for over 30 years and has held a variety of positions as both an occupational therapist and an administrator. She's focused her career in the areas of quality, patient safety, and risk for approximately 10 years. And uh, Nick uh, Giacomides graduated from Centennial College in 2001 with a diploma in nursing. And he went on to complete uh, his uh, Bachelor of Science in Nursing from St. Francis Xavier. In 2010, Nick has completed a Master's of Clinical Science in Wound Healing with the University of Western Ontario and is uh, he's a certified uh, rehabilitation nurse and recently completed the Canadian Patient Safety Officer course and the Patient Safety Education Program. Uh, Nicholas has worked at Holland Blurview for his entire nursing career, working as an inpatient nurse, day program coordinator, ambulatory care nurse, clinical educator, and most recently as a manager of patient safety. So I just want to extend a warm welcome to all of our speakers today and thank you, thank you for joining us to share your experiences. So I'm just going to uh, hand things over right now to Joan Fernandez. Okay. Thank you, Lisa, for that uh, introduction and show my screen. So I just want to make sure, so I just click there. 
Okay, so do you see the screen now? And then I just there. So is that uh, good, Lisa? Yeah, Everything's good. up. We're good. Looks great. Okay. Well, again, thank you. A uh, big thank you to CAPC for allowing us to come on and present on the Patient Safety Education Program. The format is going to be I'm going to spend about uh, five minutes just describing our program and then hand it over to Holland Blurview to talk about how they've taken the program and run with it. So um, just as a brief background on our Patient Safety Education Program at CPSI, uh, this program originally um, was developed um, internationally, actually, through uh, work with the United States and Australia leaders in patient safety who developed this core curriculum. CPSI then discovered this in around 2009 and said this would be great to bring to Canada. So between 2009 and 11, we adapted the program to the Canadian context. We mapped it to our Canadian patient safety um, competencies. We also mapped it to the Accreditation Canada ROP, so um, it really, uh, so it would be really relevant to um, healthcare providers in Canada. We've had, uh, we're working right now on our 10th uh, conference, which is scheduled for September of 2013 in Toronto. And um, just in terms of our PSEP program and what makes it um, special or different in terms of education. Um, programs around patient safety is there's two particular um, components that I wanted to draw your attention to. Uh, the one is that the, um, the program identifies skills, knowledge, and behaviors in a framework that guides your patient safety education programs within your organization. The content is built to be customized to align with the contextual needs of your organization and um, when um, the, the gang from Holland Blurview talk about their, um, how they've used PSEP um, you know, within their organization, that will come through for you. The other thing that I wanted to focus on um, is that it is a train-the-trainer program, so it really looks at um, adult teaching methodologies, different techniques that, um, and tools that you can use when you are trying to teach um, patient safety within your organization. So there's a variety of interactive learning strategies that you learn about when you attend the session. Um, just in terms of our curriculum, there's uh, 23 modules that are available at this point in time. Um, we have, there's four plenary sessions. There's also nine core modules which cover the core topics of patient safety, including system thinking, human factors, just culture. And then we're also, uh, we also have uh, cluster modules which are clinically focused, um, the action modules which support the delivery of the material, and then there are three executive modules which um, you can take and use when you're presenting to your executive level. We're also, you know, always looking at how we can enhance the program. So we're adding new modules to the uh, to the program um, on capacity building. A module is being developed now on medication reconciliation, as well as looking at uh, a module being developed for the um, incident analysis framework. So, in any of these modules, you can take and, um, you know, if you want to go to either, whatever level of the organization, to go and uh, use it as a resource, as a tool for you to um, work um, in uh, teaching patient safety education in your organization. Now, this is a complicated slide, and I certainly won't go over it in detail, but I just wanted you to get a, um, an idea that it does show you the theoretical framework that is involved with the PSEC program. Um, it's, looking on, it's looking at sort of six elements, attitudes, knowledge, skills, behaviors, uh, outcomes, and norms. So it is rooted in, in strong theoretical background, and um, uh, which helps to make it a, a very good uh, educational curriculum. So that's a brief five minutes from me on our PSEP program. Certainly on our website there's um, uh, more information on the program and on, on our upcoming conference in Toronto in September. But now I'd like to turn it over to Holland Burview Kids Rehab so that they can um, tell you what they've done with our program. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much, uh, Lisa and Joan, for having invited us. Um, we're so 
proud or we're proud to actually present the findings of uh, what we've done and how we've incorporated the PSEP program here at Holland Bloor View. And I'd really like to publicly acknowledge Judy Mayhew and Nick uh, Joachimides who've really taken this and formed it and shaped it and, and integrated it within the organization. So what we're going to uh, present today really is looking on three core um, anchors. One is how we really looked at quality anchored in strategy that led us to the PSEP sort of vehicle, leveraging PSEP in accreditation, which you know clearly is one of those elements that most organizations uh, need to go through and, and how we were successful in doing that. And then the third piece, which is very unique uh, to us, but certainly uh, not unique to the listeners on the phone, is how do you adapt PSEP, which typically is more around the adult acute care sector into a pediatric organization and truly making it a pediatric PSEP model. So the first piece, I just wanted to provide some context um, to our audience around our quality, safety, and performance program or portfolio here at Holland Bloorview is we have four key buckets. One is enhancing quality. Second is advancing safety. Third is minimizing risk. And fourth is informing performance. So really when we look at the portfolio here, it's around developing quality frameworks, uh, fostering and developing culture, ensuring that we have accountability and that we're able to basically transparently and uh, translate data into information and really creating those linkages across uh, not only Ontario, but certainly on a national and international basis. And we've really um, solidified the partnership with CPSI and PSEP to really try to leverage this. So the first piece was uh, wanting to kind of get a sense of when we think about where we started from was really looking at our original programs and services um, strategy map or strategic sort of thinking and if uh, just to orient individuals is to the left were the strategic directions of the organization which is transform care lead the system, accelerate knowledge, and inspire our people, and then really trying to link the accountability and the performance reporting in what would be a typical scorecard uh, from Kaplan and Norton, and then looking at some of the activities that lead all the way up and percolate to our leadership in childhood disability. But one of the key elements was um, that was around the learning and growth was really to support the development of a quality, safety, and performance culture. And that was one of the key uh, pieces that in thinking about leadership and thinking about how to, um, how to have the conversation with our senior management team, why PSEP, why building capacity was very important. And then if we look at our strategy map going into 2013 and 14, it is really about leadership. It's really about strengthening our skills, engaging our clinicians, thinking about how do we maximize operational efficiency and services and value, and really linking with our stakeholders. So we've really advanced from a action plan to really strategic thinking for programs and services. And the reason I wanted to bring this forth is that when we think about quality and uh, safety and performance, our portfolio, it's aligned to what the organization was trying to accomplish, and that's where we stemmed from. So where does strategy start? When we thought about it for quality and safety, it's really thinking about what our vision was for quality and safety and thinking about what the infrastructure was required, how are we going to shift the culture, the competencies, how do you build that, the people that were involved and required, looking at the structure, and then the strategic piece of where you were going, having a horizon plan, and really looking at what our current state was to where we actually wanted to go to. So when we thought about this, we thought about where our current state was, and this is in the last year, was really around alignment and really trying to see where our internal and external drivers, what was you know, uh, leading us to actually develop this? Was it just legislation? Was it regulatory bodies? Was it, you know, um, our uh, Toronto Central Lynn, our local health integrated uh, network? Was it our clients and families? How could we partner and leverage PSEP? So this was all around the strategic piece. 
And then from an infrastructure is really the recognition that there's only within quality and safety here at Holland Bloorview, you know, there is an N of four. And with an N of four, you can't really <clears throat> shift culture. You really need to create capacity. So how do you leverage leaders across the organization to be able to deliver and start to speak the same language of patient safety, of systems thinking, of human factors, of just culture, is we really needed to think about how do we build that and how do we have our physicians involved. And thinking about the culture is really around, well, what are our values? And leveraging our patient stories, because when we think about why we do this, it's really around our clients and families and ensuring that their voice was always heard and that they were in a full partnership. So when we got to the uh, construct of competencies, we really evaluated and thought long and hard that PSEP would be the appropriate vehicle for us. It was the train the trainer model approach. It had solid uh, principles around adult learning education. There was uh, a pan-national network that we could then connect because part of our strategic plan is really to be international leaders in pediatric rehabilitation. So how better than to actually have that built-in network? And then from a people standpoint, again, it was around building organizational capacity, not just Nick, Judy, and myself, but really having you know, an internal network at the micro level here at Holland Bloorview to really execute this. And finally, from a structure, was really aligning it not only from our board to our senior management to leadership, but really across the organizations where we also tapped into corporate services, human resources, collaborative practice. Our future is really to expand this. So really looking at Sensor and CASI, looking at system partnerships, considering how we can, with alongside with CPSI and PSEP, is build rehabilitation and pediatric modules. Is there opportunity for secondment? Is there opportunity to really have our clients and families take a, a greater role and an equal partnership role? So continuing on with the strategy was really what we had for quality, safety, and performance, the three sort of big dots, which was authentically listening to our partner and partnering with our families, improving access to our services, and eliminating harm, and, harm, and linking that all to our strategy and PSEP was again, once again, the vehicle that we were going to achieve this. So we looked at building within, we used PSEP to build across, and which is in our fiscal year, and now we're in the process from our portfolio is looking at how do we influence the system, and PSEP certainly will be part of that equation. So to kind of sum it, where did PSEP fit in for our internal portfolio was building and fostering a culture of quality developing our safety framework, developing an, an oversight of our safety vision plan, a uh, vision and plan, building and fostering a culture of safety, uh, really strong evaluation and reporting, looking at the just culture and risk, fostering a culture of accountability, translating data to information, and leading external internal reporting. So we felt, again, that PSEP really fit across all of the portfolio and what we were trying to accomplish and uh, we'll be going into how we created that journey. So our journey with uh, CPSI started with uh, just five of us, actually more than five of us, going to the Canadian Patient Safety Course in April of 2012 and really having that incredible opportunity of having collaborative practice and quality um, and safety and performance really linking together and also linking across with other um, uh, other organizations and, and thinking about we really need to build capacity across the organization. And through very strong um, executive sponsorship and our CEO and our VP of Programs and Services supporting this, we then decided that we were going to send 13 individuals to the PSEP training um, in 2012 in Toronto. And I'll get to who those individuals were just so that you can see that it was really cross-sectional um, across the organization. Once we did that training in September of 2012, we took it back and said, okay, now what? How are we going to move this forward? And the natural linkage when we thought about we need to quickly incorporate this so that there's uh, the ability to really uh, tangibly use those skills that we had learned 
but also to create and generate excitement. And our pressing or our burning platform was accreditation and really looking at, we were going to use all 13 of our trained leaders um, and link it over 25 sessions with our patient safety culture survey and patient safety education that both Nick and Judy will be getting into. Our next step in uh, the fall of 2013 winter is really to be looking at different modules and looking at client and family center care and then creating our internal education program which will span in 2014. So from a PSEP standpoint, we truly made a commitment. It really was a collective vision of building capacity. I can't tell or speak uh, enough about how our senior leadership bought into this, how our board bought into this, and really thinking around the strategy that you can't really shift culture, or it would be more difficult. I shouldn't say you can't. It's more difficult to shift culture when you don't have critical mass. And we really thought the critical mass was not only in numbers, but it was also in location of really having across all of programs and services from our senior directors to our managers to our collaborative practice leads, you know, to actually move this along. And ensuring, and I've bolded this, that we partnered with families because part of this is ensuring that our families feel that they're uh, included in the journey and that, journey, and that they also uh, have a voice in saying, we believe in patient safety, we demand patient safety, and we want to co-create patient safety at the organization level. So then the next step was really on how to build this PSEP organization. So the spread piece that's uh, wanting to talk about who we selected, you can see that we have the purple dots and the green dots. The green dots really tap into all of the areas. So we had our quality individuals, pharmacy, inpatients, our child development program, participation and inclusion, and client and family relations. But the purple dots were really to signify the family member having that family voice, hearing why it's important so they could spread it to all of our clients and families in our family advisory committee. Having collaborative practice, because really this is about shifting practice. <coughs> When you think about clinicians, it's about shifting the way they think and having those individuals there and executive sponsorship so that they could continue to message this at all the various levels to the importance and the resource allocation. So what did PSEP provide for us strategically was really how to build capacity in a very systematic and purposeful fashion. It provided us an ingrained network with other individuals with other organizations across Canada. And I can't tell you how important that is because there's many rehabilitation and treatment centers that we can learn from each other and possibly co-create different modules or even co-create different initiatives that will garner more traction for peace. A recognition that the PSEP modules were more aligned to the adult acute care setting but with that the opportunity to create something that could live within our organizations across the country and then really thinking of how to adjust the piece to a rehab uh, setting. So what did we do after PSEP? Well the key piece was we, we, we uh, affectionately call ourselves the group of 13 is really looking at what did we like, really talking about well what are we going to do, what are our next steps, how are we going to make this live? And really understanding what that burning platform was, which we talked about, was accreditation for Holland Bloorview. And then thinking about, well, how are we going to evaluate this? It's fine and dandy that we've all learned this, but we really need to have an evaluative framework to ensure that it is working. And then the creation, the co-creation of the group of 13, having consensus on this collective plan, because we want everybody involved and not just having specific individuals. So to just summarize before turning it over to Judy and Nick, is that we started off with our burning need, our burning platform. It was the exposure of the Canadian Patient Safety Offer, um, Officer course that really started this. And then creating that conversation or that argument to our senior leadership team saying why we needed this, why it was important for Holland Bloorview, how this could then in perpetuity create critical mass and shift that culture of safety and also create the opportunity to make something meaningful in pediatrics and rehab. 
and then really taking that through that piece that the train the trainer approach coming back to the organization and saying okay let's make it live now and we have to make it live in a way that's meaningful to individuals not something that's seen as you know off the side of your desk or you know additional work that it really created something that individuals uh, could relate to and I think the next section which I'm turning over to Judy now um, will kind of demonstrate Judy and Nick will demonstrate this Okay. Um, as the Director of Quality and Risk Management here at Holland Bloorview, I'm responsible for overseeing the accreditation process. And as um, most of you are, are probably aware, one of the mandatory elements of accreditation is the completion of the Patient Safety Culture Survey. And um, as we began organizing ourselves to uh, launch the survey in 2013, we reflected on the results of um, our survey in 2010 and at that time we were really quite surprised with our results um, there was um, no real focus to them and we were really concerned that um, staff didn't truly really understand the purpose of the survey or what patient safety culture really meant and with encouragement from our CEO we decided that we wanted to provide some focused education prior to the administration of the survey. And um, the, uh, our goals for this education were threefold. Um, we wanted to ensure that the staff understood what patient safety culture meant. We wanted to make sure that they also had a good understanding of some key patient safety concepts, such as uh, systems thinking, human factors, and just culture. And then lastly, we wanted to give staff an opportunity to reflect on the results from the 27, 2010 survey and really have that conversation with them around, you know, have we made progress? Are we improving in respect to patient safety? And it was very clear as we were uh, preparing for this education that the PSEP modules and the methodology uh, was really the ideal way to go in order to achieve these goals. So when we first looked at the modules, I think we were a little overwhelmed. We identified at least half a dozen modules that uh, were applicable to, uh, for achieving our goals. And so we really had to um, think about what were the, the most um, important or uh, the, I guess the, the, the modules that would give us the best um, leverage and the best information. Um, we also, um, wanted to ensure that the PSEP trainers, those 13 individuals that Sonia talked about, were very much engaged in organizing this education. And the expectation was that all of the trainers would act as facilitators um, during the education sessions when they were rolled out. So um, we, we also had a conversation about what would the best methodology be for um, offering these sessions. So we talked about uh, linking into staff meetings, practice councils, having open forums. Uh, also, we, um, we really uh, talked about just the length of the sessions. Uh, you know, should they be half an hour, 45 minutes, or whatever. We thought this was a great opportunity and we wanted to maximize it. So we decided that we would offer um, one hour sessions and that uh, the sessions would both be within an open forum environment as well as small group sessions. As uh, Sonia mentioned, you know, there's always issues in respect to taking information that is probably more geared to the acute care adult environment and trying to make it relevant to not only rehabilitation but also pediatrics. And we have um, a little bit of a unique situation in that many of the teams that we have here at Holland Bloorview do not work in your typical inpatient type environment. We have a lot of ambulatory care teams as well as community-based teams. So we needed to create trigger tools and make sure we had examples that were relevant to a variety of clinical settings. And when we were organizing the education, we really did base it on the principles of adult education, using trigger tapes, using client and staff stories, and making sure that we had interactive activities and sessions as part of the um, of the one-hour training session. 
Um, it was so important for us to really evaluate the outcome of these sessions, given the amount of um, resources that uh, have been put into the training of the 13 staff. And so we created feedback forms um, using Fluid Survey for each of the sessions, and we also um, got feedback from the facilitators as well. So the modules that we targeted for our education were um, the modules on culture, system failure, human factors, those were the three modules. We also wanted to make sure that we had real life examples from our staff in our, um, in our education session. And um, we wanted to be clear with our staff as to um, what we needed from them in respect to uh, completing the survey. We created multiple opportunities for staff. I think there were about 27 sessions that we offered in total. Seven were in our conference center, and they uh, were able to manage up to uh, 50 staff at a time. However, we wanted to make sure that um, everyone had access to the sessions. And so our collaborative practice leader for nursing and RT organized an additional 20 sessions um, at various times during the day and evening to make sure that our nursing staff had access to the education as well. So in respect to the uh, patient safety education um, framework, we um, had over 25 sessions delivered by all of the PSEP trainers. Uh, 220 staff in total attended the sessions, and uh, we had 100% support from our senior management. They either participated in the session or reviewed the slides that uh, were prepared for the education. In respect to the post-evaluation of the sessions, as I mentioned, we used the fluid survey to capture information about the effectiveness of each session and the, the value of the information and the content. We also surveyed the facilitators. And um, we um, also helped to, uh, or that feedback was very helpful in uh, really getting us to refine the content uh, and our facilitation techniques as we were rolling out the education. In respect to the impact on the patient safety culture survey, um, I think that definitely um, there was a heightened awareness of the patient safety culture survey and the importance of it. And as a result, we had an 89% response rate to the survey. Although we still had uh, a, <clears throat> a fair number of red and yellow flags, I think we definitely had more confidence in the results, and uh, we were able to focus our action plan uh, to address those flags. So this slide just shows you uh, some of the evaluation results that we received. We asked questions related to uh, whether the education met expectations, whether the end topics were important to the individuals who were attending the session, whether we met the goals of the um, education session, whether the facilitators were knowledgeable about the, um, the content, whether they were approachable, whether they thought they would use the information in, um, in their daily work, um, and so on and so forth. And I think that um, some of the key findings were that almost 70% of the um, individuals either agreed or strongly agreed that the sessions were useful to them and that uh, they were going to be able to integrate some of the information back into their daily activities. As well, 83% either agreed or strongly agreed that the facilitators were knowledgeable about the content and um, that the content was useful. I think when we went in, um, we were not concerned, but we wanted to make sure that the facilitators felt comfortable with the information because we have um, a variety of, uh, I guess, knowledge and expertise in respect to patient safety. And uh, based on the feedback that we got from both the attendees and the facilitators, I think they, they really felt that the, the content was, um, was information that uh, they could handle and that they, um, they really were able to answer questions about. There was also a, a fair amount of uh, qualitative information that we gained from the evaluation. And I think that uh, the videos that we created 
for this education session were really meaningful to the staff. We tried to make them specific to our environment, and um, I think that was recognized. However, there were still people who were saying they wanted more specific examples that really related to them and their team. So it really made us realize how important that um, ability to, uh, to see themselves in the examples that we were given, um, giving was to, uh, to the attendee. Uh, they really felt that the, um, the presentations were engaging, it was a fun format, that uh, the presenters uh, were knowledgeable about the information they were sharing, that uh, everyone was well prepared for the sessions, and that it really helped them in their preparation for accreditation. Um, I think that uh, we really reached out to all of the teams across the organization, and there was a strong encouragement, very strong encouragement to, send, to attend these sessions. So um, some people were pretty much mandated to attend them. So although most people really felt the information was useful, I think some staff did feel that they did have the information already and they would have appreciated the opportunity to determine whether they um, had to attend or not. <clears throat> as, um, as we mentioned, there was an or a feedback survey after each of the session, and so in respect to the, um, the interested uh, attending future sessions, this really fluctuated from group to group. However, overall, I would think that um, most people felt, uh, approximately 70% felt, that the sessions were helpful and that they would attend future sessions. So I'm going to pass it over to Nick, who's going to uh, take on the next part of this presentation. So this is where um, Judy and I um, got to have fun with designing the actual um, education template. Uh, so these are just a few of the slides from our presentation to the staff. And we took probably, I would say, 99% of the content right from the CSET binder, um, which we found really easy to use and um, very helpful. So we started off by wanting to define culture. We often speak about culture, um, but we really wanted our staff to um, understand it and then to describe the factors that contribute um, to a patient safety culture and appreciate the importance of systems thinking, uh, human factors, and just culture as it applies to patient safety. And this was a new discussion that we were having um, here at Holland Blairview with our staff. And then again, understanding the rationale for completing the um, patient safety culture survey. So again, we wanted to provide the education um, around the importance of um, participating in that survey. Uh, we created this slide um, not only to define um, hospital patient safety culture, our um, patient safety culture within um, healthcare, but um, we actually looked at company culture and we examined what made a successful company successful. And we had a lot of fun because we actually took um, Google's culture, uh, which they post right online about what uh, they try to do and try to um, try to achieve within that organization, and had some fun seeing if there was any parallels between that and uh, Holland Blurview, um, which I think the staff really then started to understand exactly what um, culture was. On this slide, we discussed the idea of the system's approach um, to patient safety and adverse events and really planted the seed of what we wanted to accomplish at Hall and Blurview. We actually got a lot of comments about the road sign there, um, which was, uh, again, another way of starting that discussion about that system's approach and which way we wanted to go. This slide here was our, was our introduction into the human factors um, discussion and it was really around sort of the goals about what we try to accomplish with human factors and again this was a new a new discussion uh, that we're having with our staff at Holland Blurview and we had a lot of fun with this um, elevator sign here about looking at um, maybe a confusing design um, and again promoted a lot of uh, generated a lot of discussion among staff around the human factors side of product uh, this was our sort of our first slide that we did that uh, really looked at group work. And this, these were two questions 
that we had asked. And what these two questions did was allow the facilitators to see if the clinicians and the people in attendance at the presentation um, were really understanding what culture was um, and really got them to explore what was happening currently within their um, program in the hospital. What we're, what we're going to show now are two trigger um, tapes that we made um, and we made these so staff could really relate to the content that we were talking about, but I think the whole foundation for it was on those trigger tapes that TSEP provided. We just wanted to go that one step further and have them see our managers, our leadership talking about patient safety. I remember it as clearly today as the day that it happened. And I was in an acute facility and um, gave a medication that technically was an overdose, and I was completely devastated. I had to, you have to talk to all these different people. You have to tell your clinical leader you're still a student. You're wondering if you're still going to get to be a nurse. You know, I've done all this stuff, but now I've made this mistake. And so it was unbelievable in terms of how it impacted me and made me think about what I needed to do and how I would, you know, when they said that I could still nurse. What I was going to do in the future to make sure that it didn't happen, nothing happened. The patient was fine, um, and it actually made the organization look at a lot of their own processes, which is great when you think about med errors. That's what you want to get out of it. What can you do to improve the system? It's not about the error, although obviously you have to frame it around the error, but it's about what went wrong, what, what happened in the system, is there potential, we're all humans, so the potential for an error is always going to be there. There's no way you can completely eliminate it, but the more you can take that human element out of it and look at the system and the process, the more opportunities there are to reduce that. And if, for anybody who's ever experienced a med error, it is, you feel sick. It's not about finger pointing, it's about figuring out how we can fix it. And this next video is from one of our um, staff physicians. I think incident reports are essential um, because it's all of our responsibilities for patient safety as well as family safety and employee safety at Holland Work. I think we want to make sure that there's timely response. Uh, the person who's actually initiated the incident report, there needs to be feedback to them so they understand the process that it has undergone. And we need to make sure that we've looked at it from an organizational standpoint because if an issue is raised in one area, it may actually be affecting many other areas within the organization. So we want to make sure it's a thorough process that's occurred. All of the incidents are actually discussed at the medical advisory committee meetings that we have. And I think this is important because not only the physician that's involved with the incident if they've reported it, um, but all the physicians that are also hear about um, the incidents that have occurred so we can be part of the solution. So now Judy will take us through um, some of the lessons learned. I think one of the, um, the key lessons that we learned was how valuable and important it was to have um, support and um, really encouragement from our CEO. She actually um, attended one of our sessions and she was amazing and after the session uh, took me aside and she had some very specific feedback about if we were going to do it again you know, what she would suggest that we do. So she, she was very much engaged in it and, and certainly had an expectation of her senior management team that they would attend the sessions as well. So that was extremely helpful. I think that the um, PSEP education definitely heightened awareness of the Patient Safety Culture Survey and was one of the key contributing factors to the fact that we had an 89% response rate. I think um, the education that went out, along with some of the redesign of the survey, really helped us in our analysis of the results and being a lot more focused this time around in how we were going to address those flags than we were in 2010. As well, um, during the education, it was amazing the number of issues that staff brought forward 
um, where we were sort of on the side saying, yeah, well, we'll need to make sure we keep track of that. And um, there were some uh, wonderful suggestions that staff made about how we could improve around patient safety. So it was really a wonderful opportunity for staff to uh, share their ideas and to give us feedback on, on patient safety. I think the fact that um, we had managers from each and every program as well as our collaborative practice leaders we definitely heightened awareness of patient safety as well as the importance of completing the survey. Um, so we also had um, definitely uh, learned that the engagement at our family advisory committee uh, was extremely important and I think one of the indicators that I found um, coming out of this was that after I had presented at the family advisory um, council was that three family members actually contacted me after the presentation to discuss um, patient safety concerns that they wanted to get off of their chest, so definitely um, forming that partnership. And we also found that, um, I think, post-education was that we were starting to use that common terminology between leadership and the clinicians within the hospital. We know that um, PSEPs created a greater desire for feedback following um, incidents, and now what we find that our staff now are asking for more after they complete an incident, that now they actually want to see that systems process or systems approach in place. Um, they want the uh, to really close the loop following an incident, so it's not just enough to put it in, they actually want that follow-up. Uh, there certainly is a greater comfort with um, PSEP leaders in delivering education, and I think that really is attributed to the fact that we made these lessons our own, we made our own trigger tapes, and we really did try to try to make it pediatric rehabilitation um, friendly. So where do we go now? We want to ensure that we are linking PSEP to strategy and ensure that we're aligned with the organization goals and outcomes. Uh, we're in the midst of creating a hospital-wide patient safety vision uh, using PSEP language and concepts and uh, really using it, creating a language that everybody understands across the hospital, and that's not just for clinicians, but also for our families and um, clients as well. Uh, we're developing a client safety plan, which does include the implementation of at least two modules per year to all clinical staff, and then of course, um, that will be connected with um, our families as well. And then content is gonna be delivered by the entire PSEP team, so like Sonia and Judy, had both mentioned that this doesn't just lie with us, that there's 13 of us collectively in this delivering the, um, delivering the module. And then of course continue with the philosophy that patient safety sits with every employee and embrace the PSEP approach. And like I had mentioned before, presenting um, PSEP material to our family advisory committee uh, and ensuring that families are receiving equal information. What's really interesting about this is as I've already presented uh, to that committee, um, that this is something that they want as well, that there's a lot of pull from them wanting this, that it's not just us from the organization pushing it to them, that they're actually requesting this. Uh, we wanna build more PSEP trainers within our family leaders, and then also building our physician leadership capacity within PSEP. Um, and of course, we'd like to create a pediatric rehabilitation module um, for system use, and then leveraging the master facilitator pin nationally. So Sonia had the opportunity to, att to attend back in April um, to become a master facilitator, and certainly leveraging um, her to influence um, the pediatric rehab agenda. So just on a final note, before uh, we turn it back over to Lisa and Joan, um, I would say that for Holland Bloorview, this has been an incredible opportunity uh, that our senior leadership team supported wholeheartedly. And I think it's been a really wonderful experience for all of the 13 that attended it, as well as the two executive sponsors, uh, in addition to the 13, to really embrace that patient safety is everyone's business. Patient safety is just not you know, um, at the level of the individual clinician and that we have to really invest and create that common language and understanding and really be systematic and purposeful and thoughtful and reflective of how we're going to create this, how we're going to move it forward, and how do we make it live in an organization. So 
we were very happy. CPSI and PCEP have provided a wonderful partnership model, and we look forward to future endeavors. So thank you very much on behalf of Judy, Nick, and myself for allowing us to share our journey and our experience, and we've learned so much, and we look forward to learning even more in the future. Thank you very much, Sonia and uh, Nick and Judy. That was great. Um, I, uh, you know, as you're going through this process, and uh, you know, you've, you've had your first year where you've had some amazing, uh, amazing milestones. It'd be great uh, as you continue on this journey if you could uh, check in with us and, and share your progress, because I think that uh, we all have a lot to learn from from what you're doing. Um, so we have uh, Joan. Did you have any? Uh, um, Comments or questions before I start with the, uh, the um, uh, yeah, just just to again thank uh, Holland Blurview for a great presentation and to really show practically how you've taken the the program and and used it within your organization with great success. So I uh, really appreciate your presentation and your um, sharing your videos and that. And you've just uh, you know took the product, uh, took the conference, and and then ran with it. So thank you again for that. Uh, so I guess Lisa, if there's uh, questions or anything uh, that you have had come in. Yeah. So just a reminder to everybody that uh, there's a question uh, panel on the right hand side of your screen and you can uh, type in your questions. We have a few here. I think this first one was asked before um, the question was answered during the presentation, but I'll, I'll just repeat it anyways and uh, have you uh, answer that for us. So what modules were used? Uh, Sonia? Um, yeah, so Judy, answer this. Yeah, I just, um, we used the module on um, culture, which is module five, system failure, module one, and human factors, module two. Perfect. Um, and Lisa, if I could just add in, if you go to our um, our website, uh, CPSI's website, go into the PSEP Canada website, we have our core curriculum listed there. So you can go on it and see the, the names of all the different modules and the cluster modules which focus on the clinical pieces. Our mental health modules were just launched um, and are available to download. Those are the only ones at this point in time that are available to download, but it certainly will give you um, a taste of what the other modules would look like. Um, uh, so just so that people are aware of that. Very good, thank you. Um, so another question uh, from Nadine. Uh, 220 of 376 staff participation. Uh, how many physicians and how do you encourage physician involvement? I know that was one of your next steps and things that you're look, you know, moving towards doing. I think there were, I think there were several physicians involved, and I know Nick, um, he and the um, co-chair of our uh, patient safety committee, who is a physician, did the presentation actually for the patient safety committee. All of the physicians were sent the slides as well, so that if they weren't able to attend the session, they were able to review the slides. And I know several physicians did that. And I, what I'd like to add to this is that while we sent the group of 13 in September of last year, we had worked very closely with our uh, VP of Academic Affairs and Chief of Medicine, uh, Dr. Golda Milo Manson, and we uh, had two spots reserved for physicians, but regretfully, at the same time, there was the International Pediatric Conference that was being held in Toronto. So it was a conflict for our physicians to go as they were presenting much of their content at the conference in Toronto that they could not attend the PSEP training. But our goal is this year in Toronto, again, when it's going to be in September, is to send both of our co-chairs, and, and this is a conversation that needs to happen with uh, Dr. Milo Manson, um, at least having one or two physicians attend this so that we can have uh, further traction, but our physicians are fully engaged. They sit at our quality steering committee. They sit on several of the subcommittees they co-chair with Nick and Judy, and they have been part of the delivery of the education. It's just unfortunate the conflict and timing of when the sessions occurred last September that they weren't able to attend. Excellent. 
So um, uh, another question from Kathy. Um, please describe how your staff attended the forums. Was it paid time? Were there lunch and learns? Or were, were the staff backfilled? The sessions were offered at uh, various times during the day, so it was paid time. Excellent. And uh, from Patty, another sort of, uh, uh, sorry to be pragmatic, but were the trainers paid, staff paid, any problem freeing up staff? So sort of the same. I'm sorry, could you? Could you... Yeah, sorry, to, uh, uh, the question is, were the trainers paid? Well, we, it would have been during their work hours, mm -hmm. but having said that, they were provided at different times. and. From a leadership perspective, um, because many of our leaders are that attended were either collaborative practice leaders or managers or senior directors, we did provide the education at various times throughout the day. And what I would say is that you know in leadership, often your time is not a seven and a half hour day. Right. And so this was a commitment made by our leadership team that we would go out to all of our staff at various locations at various times because we felt that this truly was the burning platform around safety. So, you know, one can say, yes, they are salaried individuals and they were paid, but certainly I can almost attest to that almost none of our leaders work a seven and a half hour day. That's probably not unique. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that Judy and I did as well is that we really developed it between the two of us and then we brought the group of 13 together and presented it to them and then we refined it, um, which I think made a big difference. And our, also our one of our, our nursing um, practice leader, um, she also provided sessions at 7 o'clock in the morning. Um, so she came in early to make sure that, and at night as well, to make sure that we were getting, I mean, as we all know, healthcare is not uh, 8 to 4, that it's a 24-hour business. So we really did uh, try to accommodate as many as we could. Great, and I think that's that's what everybody has to do, right? So I don't have any more questions in the panels right now, but um, I was just wondering, um, um, has your you talked about uh, your staff now wanting sort of uh, feedback on incidents uh, more quickly now, or to make sure that the loop is closed? So how is that? changed your incident reporting process? Um, well, I mean, we've seen a huge um, jump in the number of staff that are reporting incidents. And one of the things that we did was after the patient safety culture results were in, um, we held a cafe conversation looking at the results with our staff and really wanted to look at the red flags that were identified. So now we're into the next phase, which again links right back to PSAP, um, or as, as a part of the education that we provided, is that we want to find out how our staff want that to flow. So we're in the process now of just compiling that information from the CAFE conversation that we held um, in looking at how we, again, can better um, communicate with our staff. The other thing that Nick and I have done is um, we've met with each of the management teams to um, so to put it back on them as well, to identify how are they going to make sure that they're closing the feedback loop. Mm -hmm. um, we do have an electronic system and Nick does provide the initial feedback to staff, but really it's up to the managers to close the loop. And so we're working with them to make sure that they're taking that responsibility seriously. And the other piece to add to Nick and Judy is that that then feeds back into creating critical mass. If you have leadership, managers, clinicians, all understanding and speaking that language of patient safety and risk and good catches, and we utilize the World Health Organization incident um, uh, reporting framework, that everybody has that common understanding that there isn't then another added element when you think of either human factors or system thinking that there isn't a gap, that we're all speaking that language and working towards that collective goal. That's great. Uh, I don't have any other um, questions at this time on the, uh, I'm just going to uh, show everybody 
as we wait for uh, some some more questions. Um, all of our this presentation is uh, being recorded and it is going to be available to uh, everybody on the CAFC Knowledge Exchange Network, mm -hmm. and uh, you'll see that it's. Uh, that's the title, Patient Safety in Pediatrics, how the PSEP Canada program can enhance patient safety in your organization. So, so the, the presentation will be, um, will be posted here as well as on our YouTube uh, um, channel, mm -hmm. so, as well as all of our other presentations are here on the Knowledge Exchange Network. And um, I think that uh, I'm just going to I'll bring up uh, CPSI as... Um, Thank you. Thank you. Whereabouts? Uh, yeah, if you go under education, mm -hmm. and then you go to patient safety education program, yep, yeah, right there. And then uh, it talks about our new mental health modules, and those modules are available for you to download. At this point in time, we're working towards getting all the modules available online, but the, the new mental health uh, modules, which were developed um, in collaboration with the, OH, the uh, OH Ontario Hospital Association and uh, PAN Canadian Advisory Group to develop these modules. Um, are available and as, again as I said earlier the, the, all the curriculum if you scroll down a bit Lisa on the page um, it should you see where it says curriculum design yeah if you click in there then that lists all of the uh, modules that are available uh, with our program and I guess one of the things I just from a practical standpoint uh, Sonia and team about uh, I liked your idea of the client safety plan. That, that's a required organizational practice for Accreditation Canada, I believe. And the fact that you're using two of the modules to incorporate into your plan, I think, is a, it's a really good tool to use. Um, it's, uh, so I was, I was impressed when I heard that you were doing that. Yeah, and, and it's, again, trying to align yeah, for, strategically for our group. You know, to function in isolation makes it very difficult. And, you know, um, quality, safety, you know, and risk and performance is always the challenge that, you know, it may not be understood entirely and you really have to co-create that understanding across the organization. And we've talked about this at nauseum around how we need to align it, how we need to be practical. All of us, you know, have clinical backgrounds. We remember very vividly and very clearly some of the challenges you know, that clinicians face on a day-to-day -day basis. And how do we make it so that ultimately this creates a better system that we will all access, whether it's ourselves, our families, our friends, um, in the future. And uh, so using this module, modules here as part of the framework of how we want to execute and increase our knowledge base and capacity is really, it's helpful for us. And we look at it from a horizon planning and thinking about how are we going to build on everything and how it relates to where we want to go. Right, right, exactly, yeah. So, Lisa, if I can get you just to go back up to our, um, uh, just go back one, I don't know if you can, just to the main page. I just was going to show where the, uh, just to, yeah, become a, so right there where it says become a patient safety trainer, if you, the, the link there. Uh, just yeah that one exactly yeah just so that people are aware uh, information is up about the next um, open course which is in Toronto the 25th to the 26th you can click in there and then uh, we have an early bird rate going on just do a little sales pitch here but um, until the <laughs> end of um, at the end of June but, um, you know, as um, Sonia was talking about, we can always um, open the conversation up to, to doing possibly something, you know, uh, specifically pediatric related, a conference specifically for um, the pediatric community. That could be something that we could look at for uh, next year. So, always happy and willing to discuss that possibility with uh, CAPC. And we would love that. We would welcome that because that is what our staff and, and I would say most staff in pediatric settings and then you, you know, superimpose the rehab setting saying, yeah, that's great, but, you know, this is not an adult acute care setting. This right. is a pediatric setting and then if you're in a rehab setting, you know, which historically where I've worked both in rehab and ambulatory care, people say, well, it's not the same risk, it's not the same challenges, it's not the same safety issues. 
give me something tangible, give me something practical. Right, right. I'm just wondering if, this is Lisa, I'm just wondering if anybody else online has uh, participated uh, in any of these PSEP training programs, just, you know, just type in uh, your organization that yes, you have. Because I know that there have been uh, a few pediatric organizations who have gone uh, through the training. So it'd just be interesting to know if anybody who's still online uh, has participated. So, oh, there's been some not yet. So, <laughs> so uh, maybe some interest brewing. Um, um, I think that it, 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 it's a good conversation to have, though, between CAFC and CPSI and for a patient safety collaborative. Um, I, I think that uh, there might be opportunities. Uh, uh, Kathy Litwin says yes, uh, that they have participated, and Western Health in Newfoundland has participa participated. So there are a few people online. So um, if you have any comments or anything that you'd like to share uh, about um, about your experience, just type some things in, or I can try to try to unmute your line. But uh, we can see if maybe through our patient safety collaborative, we can do some brainstorming on um, on on how to uh, to make this more pediatric specific and what are the needs. And I was um, as I was looking at this at your um, at the sessions. Mm -hmm. Um, that um, the Patient Safety Collaborative has done a lot of work in the past uh, using the Safety Competencies Framework and trying to relate that sort of educational framework and academic framework to everyday um, um, practice. Mm -hmm. And so I see has how the you know the same the same. Um, the same concepts and the same competencies are within this PSEP framework, and so it seems to be a, sort of a more concrete way for us to uh, to relate all of those things because they all do relate to Accreditation Canada, which is um, certainly um, a, a bit of a a carrot or uh, right for the uh, for the community. So yeah, yeah, it's Joan here, and um, also yeah, and as I said um, in the introduction, all of the modules are mapped to the safety competencies as well. So when you if you go into the mental health module and you open it up at the beginning, you'll see where they it has been mapped. The objectives have been mapped to the safety competencies. So all the modules are mapped to the safety competencies. So whatever we can do to make it easier, and all of the um, you know, good material that's out there, we can work to mesh it together, so to speak, and uh, um, make it easier for healthcare providers to be able to push the patient safety agenda in their organization. So. Well, we really appreciate um, this work and, and our partnership with CPSI. And uh, there don't appear to be any more questions, so um, if anybody has any closing comments, um, uh, I think we might be able to uh, to, uh, to close up in a moment and uh, and maybe continue this. Oh, there's a question here. A comment from Len it says, although pediatric care may have different concerns, I think PSAP does a great job at addressing patient safety regardless of area. So mm -hmm. that's a, that's a very good endorsement. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Lynn. Yeah. Yeah. And a few thank yous from uh, from individuals. So, okay. thank you to everybody that attended, and, uh, and yes. hopefully we'll be able to continue this conversation and uh, follow up with Hall of Riverview on their progress and uh, maybe uh, sort of brainstorm and how we can make this more pediatric specific. And everybody's saying great work at Hall of Riverview. Thank you for inviting us. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for inviting us to. Goodbye. Bye-bye.